Alrighty, when the current generation of GPUs were released, Nvidia was criticized for including low amounts of VRAM on their higher end cards, 3070 and 3080. Uh, now, almost two years later, was the VRAM enough? Uh, or are those cards hurt by the limited amount of VRAM? All right, so if I recall correctly, I don't think I criticized Nvidia for the RTX 3080. I think I mentioned that it was a bit disappointing that as a full as a card that was predominantly targeting 4K. It only had 10 gigs, but I didn't... I didn't. It wasn't a deal breaker. It certainly wasn't a deal breaker. It wasn't a problem immediately. It was a concern for maybe future ray tracing titles, high texture packs, that sort of stuff. But I thought you'd probably get away with that. I think in follow-up content, we certainly said that. The 3070, I'm pretty sure I did criticize NVIDIA for that one, um, only eight gigabytes. And I think... It's been proven at this point that for a premium product, eight gigabytes probably wasn't enough. And I know some people jump up and down about that because look, for the most part, it was enough. That is true. And you can work around VRAM limits pretty well. But if you bought a 3070 to enjoy high quality texture packs, ray tracing enabled, like the most impressive visual experience possible. I've seen loads of examples and I've run into some of them myself where you do run out of VRAM with a 3070. There are yep. games that does yep. that, you know, Far Cry 6 is an example. Um, and I've there's plenty more. You don't have to search too far on YouTube to see users testing out the latest and greatest games on a 3070 using ray tracing and at some point in the game running into VRAM limitations. Yeah, and sure, you can reduce the texture quality and that sort of thing. But I think on a higher end card like a 370, especially with the prices that they actually were selling for yeah. that last couple of years, yeah, it, it feels a bit slim on that front. I think it was exacerbated by... Its direct competitor having more VRAM, the 6700 XT and 6800 XT. The 6800 XT had 16 gig. The 68, the 67 had 12. 6712 was still more. Still and also that more. the 3070 was very similar performance to the 2080 Ti, but the 2080 Ti was an 11 gigabyte card. That's right. So it kind of ran into that double whammy, whereas if those two things weren't a factor, then it would be easier to excuse. But mm -hmm. You know, that wasn't the case. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, some people are probably going to, you know, see this, answer this question and be like, yeah, well, I've got a 370 and, you know, I can just turn down the high texture pack and I don't even notice the difference in textures. But I think in that class of car that you're buying, you should kind of expect to use Demand maximum, a bit more. maximum uh, yeah. quality settings. Whereas For sure. If it was a 3060 or something like that, it's like, yeah, okay, sure, you don't Fair have enough. to run it. At that, but you're talking a five hundred dollar, but actually like well over a thousand dollar GPU. Humorously, the thirty sixty has more VRAM. Yeah, so that was also a problem, and <laughs> they yeah, they kind of self admitted they screwed up there, but and whatever. I, th I think with a lot of these, uh, something we've talked about many times in these Q and A's is that we're not quite at the so called next gen of gaming mm -hmm. when it comes to you know console generation mm -hmm. <laughs> generations. Mm -hmm. We're sort of in that transitory period as game developers start utilizing next generation game engines that are designed specifically for you know next gen gpus and consoles use direct storage ray tracing as sort of like key features once those start to become more we get more and more games that are like that i expect vram requirements for games to increase yeah. quite substantially and to be clear we i never said that the eight gigabytes of vram on the 3070 was a deal breaker yeah. Merely that it was disappointing and concerning for two, three, four years down the track. How that may, it, it was basically just highlighting that potential issue, but not saying that that necessarily needs to be factored into the buying decision now. Um, yep. Things that you can benefit from now are ray tracing, performance, which is better, DLSS, all that. But anyway, all of that stuff yeah, it's is definitely, in the reviews. It's definitely a future looking thing. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I think two years later, you probably wouldn't have expected too many games to start utilizing massive amounts of VRAM, but certainly in the next couple of years, I would be expecting more impressive fidelity games coming out that do require more than that. But we'll see. Mm -hmm. We'll see whether that was, you know, I'm sure you'll do a revisit in a couple of years and we'll see for sure Definitely. which one, which card ended up being the better choice. Mm -hmm.